Welcome back to an exciting video. And what we're talking about today is do you connect to your guitar? So what do I mean, do you connect to your, your guitar? Well, this is very simple. I'm going to try to keep this as short as I can, but I'm just going to apologize now because you know how I am. And hell, that's why I started a podcast, because I talk a lot. So when I was, when I was many, many years ago, when I was a young chitlin, or a younger, younger dude, not a chitlin at that point, uh, a younger dude, and I started playing, actually, I started playing piano first. I was married, my wife had an upright piano, and I play, 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 play. And absolutely fell in love with it uh, to the point that after we bought our new house, I actually ended up buying a Yamaha baby grand. And to me, I mean, that to me, that was as good as having a Ferrari. That was one of the greatest things I'd ever purchased in my life. And the connection I had to that piano was insane. All I wanted to do when I got home, I'd come home play with my little girl, bum, 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 rough her up a little bit, throw her around, turn her upside down and shake her for loose change, <laughs> which I used to do all the time. And she'd just laugh her ass off. But once we got her settled down and the wife would, you know, settle down doing her thing, I was in the den on that grand piano. And I would sit there for hours, and I mean hours, playing that thing. And it just, I was mesmerized by that piano. And uh, unfortunately, after the divorce, you know, things go south and then, you know, things go away. So I ended up losing my grand piano. And uh, but grand piano still has a spot right here, baby. I don't know if I'll ever buy another one, but it's definitely got a spot here. But during that time of that grand piano, I started to get interested in guitar also because I was I was slowly in my my slowly forming into a musician phase. And um, and yes, I was married. So you could tell I was I was, you know, a bit older when all this went down. And, um, but I also got married, you know, pretty much out of high school, you know, that's what we did back then, you know, high school, sweetheart, you get out of high school, boot, marry him, and you're off. So, um, after playing for a while, I kind of started, you know, messing around with the guitar. I actually went and started taking, you know, piano lessons. I actually bought a grand piano before I took piano lessons, figured that one out. And so I started taking piano lessons from this brilliant uh, piano teacher and, um, she was just fantastic. But the more I played with her, the more my passion for that piano grew and for the love of music, um, especially classical, man. The, Be the Beethoven piano sonatas, just absolutely phenomenal pieces of work. And out of all the music in the world, if I had to pick the top three pieces of music, and I mean of everything, of rock and roll, metal, everything, boy, the Moonlight Sonatas would be in there. It's just absolutely brilliant piece of work. And um, anyway, so I started going to school for music, and I was a piano major and a guitar minor. And um, and I had this little shitty guitar. It was a hammer. It was more like a Jackson knockoff is what it was. And I just, you know, bang around on it, beat on it. Didn't I, you know, I knew what I was doing because at this point I was already taking piano classes, so I understood music. But I still didn't know how to play a damn guitar. I mean, two totally, totally different instruments. And um, so... Uh, and the reason I keep touching my nose, if you're wondering, is because my allergies are wide open, dude, and my nose itches like crazy. <laughs> it's allergy season here where I'm at, and the allergens here are really bad. So and my nose just itches like crazy, so I apologize for that. But uh, so when I went to school for music, and I was a piano major, guitar minor, and I went and took this uh, jazz guitar class. And um, as soon as I walked in there, a guy was playing one of the, you know, the expensive Ibanez jazz boxes, not, you know, the little $300, $400 art cores. This is a, you know, $2,000 jazz box or whatever. And uh, he's like, all right, so we're going to learn some guitar. Yada, yada, pull your guitar out. So I pull out that uh, that um, hammer. Class is over right there. <laughs> yeah. The guy's like, you know, we can do this. We can learn guitar. But you are not to come back in this classroom until you come with a better, with, with a real guitar. So I loaded my guitar and I thought, what a dick. Yeah, I'm just going to drop this class, you know. What, who the hell does he think he is, you know? What bullshit is this? 
Just because, you know, you got your jazz box. Do you think my little hammer is a piece of shit because you don't like it? You know what? Piss on this. I'm not doing it. So I go home and I tell my wife, and I'm like, bah, 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 bah. and she's like, well, just go buy a damn guitar. I was like, well, oh, that would be the simple solution. <laughs> but you know, being a guy, you know, freaking stubborn as hell. And, you know, I was just like, you know, you know, tell me my guitar is a piece of shit, you know, <laughs> come back to your class, asshole. So I went out and I bought a Fender. It was a Fender Alter Deluxe Plus Blonde. Had the LSR roller nut and it had the um, lace sensor pickups. It had a double red, a silver single in the middle, and a single blue up front. Lace sensor pickups, if you have not played them, they are absolutely brilliant pickups. And some of my favorite pickups in the world are lace sensors. And I'm going to tell you now, there's not many sounds better in this world than a Fender Strat, a good Fender Strat. With a lace sensor blue in the front and a silver in the middle, there's not many things in this world that sound better than that. Brilliant. I digress. So I popped my ass into the class, uh, you know, uh, there's a week later because this, this was like on, I had that class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This is on Tuesday. I didn't go on Thursday because I was still pissed off at him. So I pop in there Tuesday and he's like, uh, let's see what you got. And I pop open and rip that fender out. And he's like, now you're talking. Let's learn some jazz. And I was like, yeah, bitch. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so we get in there and we start cutting and doing our thing, this, that, the other. Guy was a brilliant guitar player, brilliant jazz and blues guitar player. So over time, I, I start to fall in love with guitar, and um, I start to switch my major to a guitar major, piano minor. And, you know, the, the thing that sucks about that is my piano skills have fallen significantly. Um, you know, I now play piano. I'm not a piano player. I'm a guitar player. When I was new, I played guitar. Now I'm a guitar player. But now I play piano. I am not a piano player. And I do hate that because even when I come home now, even today... If I've had a shitty day, I just don't feel good. I'm just tired. I, I've got to unwind. I've got to let this go. Oh, I got to turn this off. I sit at my piano. I do not go to my guitars. My guitars make me aggressive. And what do I mean by that? I'm talking, you know, distortions, solos, trim bends, you know, wells, artificial pick harmonics. My piano takes me to classical. And just the beauty of the whole thing is to me is just, it is literally the most relaxing thing I know to do. To alleviate a lot of, I go to the gym. To alleviate a lot of, ah, I go to the piano. So, boy, did that kind of sway off track. But this is not a channel about me talking to you about stuff. This is a channel about me and my friends on the other side of the camera because these are little windows into my life because I can tell you now, I watch uh, YouTube channels and again, Jesus Christ, I'm off track. I watch YouTube channels and I watch two or three from each person. But if I can't connect with that person, I just don't want to watch his videos. And I don't connect with him because I know nothing about him. I just got some moving mouthpiece over there that's doing a, a demonstration of a guitar. He plays for 27 minutes, talks about the guitar for two minutes, and then he's off. I'm done. I will never go back to the channel because, I, you know, I want to know who the hell I'm talking to. Who am I looking at? And that's just how I'm built. I'm a different breed of a dude. Um, so there's these, these are little windows into my life. So you all can connect with me and hopefully, you know, stay subscribers forever. And that's kind of what I'm hoping for. And. You know, I get to the point where my channel's big enough to I don't have to do it to my damn job every day. <laughs> That's the goal. That's the ultimate goal. Anyway, this is why I started a podcast, man, because I just got so much stuff to say. I mean, I just talk all the time. And I know all of y'all out there going, no shit, dude. We've seen your videos. So, <laughs> so anyway, I started to fall in love with guitar. And... um. And I played the shit out of that Fender, dude. I mean, I played the hell out of that Fender, but there was always something missing. There was just something that was not there where I needed it to be on that Fender. So I went out and I just started playing everything I could find. I started playing everything I could find. And nothing was bringing it home to me. And then I wandered into this music store we got down on Broadway. And this was years and years and years and years and years and years and years ago. And they had a PB Wolfgang hanging on the wall. I thought, you know what? I'm going to play that. I love EVH, but I did not want an EVH guitar because that wasn't me. I'm not EVH. Personal thing with me, personal thing. 
So I got it down and I played it. Played brilliantly. Brilliantly. And um, I left. Played a few more guitars over the next week or so. Wandered back down to Broadway. Played that EVH again. And I thought, man, this thing is just absolutely awesome. And what was getting, the first thing that was getting me was on the back of it, EVH, it has the sculpted hill. And the fender has that big block on the back, and I despise that block. And I got little hands, so that when I was up on the high on the register, man, that block—I mean, hell, just—and I was holding the neck like this, and it just—I just didn't like it. And there's other reasons too. The fender just felt big to me. Just the guitar feels huge. So, left again and went back another week later and played that EVH for the third time. And I thought, you know what? I think this is a guitar. So I bought that EVH. And I felt I loved that EVH the way I loved my grand piano. Because Eddie Van Halen was brilliant in the construction of that guitar. And what he did is Eddie Van Halen, he loves the way that the Fenders, the Gibsons played. I'm sorry, the Gibsons played. And yes, I can prove that. And I'm going to prove that to you right now. It does have a 25.5 scale, and the Gibson has a 24.75. If you play a 25.5 back-to-back with a 24.75, the first thing you're going to notice is how much shorter the 24.75 feels. It feels two feet shorter. The whole guitar feels smaller, and that's a good thing. Well, what Eddie Van Halen did is he kept the 25.5 scale, and I understand why he did that, because of string tensions and so on and so on. But what he did in his infinite wisdom and the brilliance that is Eddie Van Halen may not be your favorite guitar player, but there's none better. As a total package, he was truly a god. He took that Wolfgang, and he's plainly looking at the guitars, ABCDFG, and he's like, well, okay, they're all idiots. (laughs) I'm going to do this correctly, and he did. And this is what brought on a lot of the shape of the guitar. Eddie Van Halen took the neck and he set it one inch deeper into the body and moved the electronics and the bridge back. If you look at a regular guitar up against an EVH, you will notice the neck sits into the body quite a bit bit further. And look at how much less room there is behind the tremolo system in the back of the guitar. There's significantly less room back there. So therefore, it plays like a 25.5 guitar but it feels like a 24.75 guitar, which was absolutely brilliant on his part. And I do not understand why other guitar players aren't doing that. If you look at a Jackson, there's this much dead real estate behind the freaking trim system from here to here. It's huge. Okay, why don't we get smart? Let's stick that in a little bit further. Let's lessen the room. Make the, just give the guitar a smaller footprint all the way around. Because one thing I loved about the EVH is the guitar felt tiny compared to my Fender. So, my connection to that EV8 was almost freaking instant. And I loved that guitar. And I loved that guitar so much that it had the same effect on me when I had my grand piano. I could not wait to get home and play that guitar. Because the more you play guitar, the better guitar player you become. The more you figure out, the more real, real, uh, well-rounded you become. And I loved playing my EVH. Loved it. To the point where I had 13 of them. The connection between me and that guitar was simply astounding. And that made me want to play the guitar. So, the point I'm making, if you're playing guitar, and there's just something that's just a roadblock you cannot get past. Maybe it's not this. Maybe it's not this. Maybe it's the guitar. And the reason I say that is, is because if that guitar is not a part of you, now we all don't have the the fortune that Eddie Van Halen had. Eddie Van Halen built what he felt was the best guitar in the world. And I got to admit, I'd be pretty damn hard pressed not to agree with him, man. They're built like freaking, I mean, I got a 96 that goes to every single show. I had a Blue Flame Maple that my rhythm guitar player borrowed for a song, dropped it, off the damn stage, landed dead on its face, got up, and he played the rest of the show with that damn guitar. 
any other guitar would have broken at that point. It didn't even knock the damn thing out of tune. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it was just insane. These guitars are insane, and even the fenders are insane, just the uh, construction quality. And so, but because of the connection of the guitar I had, I wanted to play all the time. So maybe if you're having a roadblock, maybe it's not you. Maybe it actually is your guitar. And you're probably thinking, what do you mean? How is that even possible? How could that be my guitar? This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard you say in your life. But is it? Going through all the stuff with my EVH guitars, um, I wanted to find something that was different. Because I had all these guitars that sounded exactly the same. And which was cool. You know, most people play a guitar. But when you're covering a lot of songs, you cannot play a guitar. I cannot play Come On Baby Finish What You Started on an EVH. It simply doesn't sound correct. Um, so I ended up and I started buying other guitars to get a different feel. And also because we you know we'd play these long shows and playing, you know, night after night after night, I'd have these massive bruises from the bindings. I wear my guitars up high. I did a video on that uh, on my forum. And that started to get a little old because it was just, you know, always really tender right there. So I started looking for ways around that. And I thought, well, there's got to be something else I connect with. Got to be. And that sent me down this incredibly long road. Dude, I bought two Petrucci's, a JP7, a JP15. I've had one Majesty. Actually, I'm sorry, I've had two Majesties. I had a white Majesty, and then I had this, um, uh, no, actually, I'm sorry. I had a silver Majesty, and, and I got rid of that one and got the white one. And then ultimately, I ended up getting the red of the white one because there again, I just didn't have that particular connection with it. I had a Music Man Axis. I did not like that. Fantastic guitar. Music Man makes brilliant guitars. I just was not connecting with them. I had a Luke. I could have connected with that Luke more than likely. I just wish it had a full locking trim system on it because I am brutal on trim systems and I could not keep it in tune. So I ended up sending that one down the road. I've had a plethora of Les Pauls. I love Les Pauls. I'm going to repeat that. I love Les Pauls. I just have not found that one that I've connected with. Because if I don't connect with the guitar, I don't want it. And I don't need it because I will not play it. And I'm getting ready to show you my point here in a second. I had Hot Rod uh, Tellies. They came and went. I bought a Sir. I wanted so much to love that Sir guitar. I've got tons of friends who buy them and swear by Sir guitars. And dude, I just hated that Sir guitar. I mean, I didn't connect with anything on that guitar. Now, that doesn't mean it's a bad guitar. I just did not connect with it. It did not suit me. But it's just amazing to me how it suits everybody else, but it doesn't suit me. But, you know, that's why they make chocolate ice cream. Not everybody likes vanilla. So I had the Sir. So finally, I landed, and I bought the S-Series Ibanez, because out of all the guitars I tried, I never bought an Ibanez. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try this S-Series. So I got the S-Series. You've seen it in my videos. And I played it, and I liked it. I liked it a lot. I'm going to say I, I almost loved it, but there was still just something missing. I don't know what it was. So then I finally ended up buying the 5320, and I thought the RG. And I thought, oh, my God, dude, I absolutely love this guitar. It's just I'm going to play it and play it and play it and play it and play it. And I'm just going to, I'm going to just, you know, and I struggled at first because that's such a thin neck coming off the EVHs. And of course, you know, with the scale and the way the guitar is built, hell, the neck feels like it's this long on me as opposed to the EVHs, which feels this long. So I played the hell out of 5320 and absolutely loved it. But then I bought my 1120 Premium. That's correct. Not a prestige. The one on my video that I call the Jimmy Buffett guitar. I absolutely love that 1120. I connected with that guitar just as fast as I did my EVHs. Now, when we go to band practice, you know, we just got through playing a bunch of shows. My hands are still, my fingertips are still sore. Well, we got to practice. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I got other shit to do, man. I got shitty videos to shoot. I got the podcast I've started. I need to go to the gym. I got to, you know, I sat here for two days uh, this weekend because we played Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So I sat there Sunday and um, and uh, I don't even know what today is. Today's Tuesday. I sat there Sunday, Monday and cut commercials all day for my video production company. So, but then, you know, so I don't want to go to band practice, but when we get the band practice and I'm just, uh, 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 don't want to go to band practice. I don't want to. Know. And then I plug in that 1120 and dude, I am ready to go. As soon as I, ah, that first chord, 
I'm ready to rock. Everything goes out the window because of the connection to that guitar. That guitar makes me want to play, and therefore that guitar makes me a better guitar player. So like I said, if you're having an obstacle and you cannot figure out what that obstacle is, you're just hitting this certain roadblock, maybe it's not you, maybe it's your damn guitar, because the guitar is all the difference in the world. Well, how much of a difference can a guitar play? I can't even count the ways. The different neck radiuses, the different, uh, on, on the fretboard, uh, the different neck shapes in the back, the different pickup setups, the different trim systems, the different bodies. You know, do you want a carved, um, a carved top? Do you want a flat top? You know, the different sounds of all the different woods. There's a million reasons why that guitar may not be the guitar for you. Case in point, I've got this guitar right here. Absolutely magnificent instrument. Not cheap either. They don't make these anymore. Fantastic guitars, and it sits in the case. And besides right now, it has not come out of its case in five or six months, besides what I'm getting ready to show you. This is my Gibson ES-235 Memphis. There again, I wanted to love this guitar so much I could not stand it. Has all the right appointments, has everything you think you would love. It sits in the case. I simply do not connect with this guitar at all. So therefore, I never play it. So I should sell it. I need to sell it to somebody who's actually going to enjoy such a masterful instrument. Because this thing is its fantastic. It is a brilliant guitar. But since I don't connect, it sits in the case. And that's sad. Because it's a great guitar. But... I never come home thinking, God, I can't wait to play that Gibson. Woo! But I do come home a lot of times thinking, dude, I got those songs I got to learn. Oh, shit. I'm pulling out my 1120 PBZ. Dude, I'm going to well on that thing. The guitar itself will make you a better guitar player. The guitar itself will make you want to be a better guitar player. The connection between you and your guitar starts at the instrument, through the hands, to the brain, but ultimately to the heart. If you don't feel it here, you're never going to feel it here. Keep that in mind when you start practicing. If you're having issues, you might want to check a different axe and see if it helps you out a little bit because they all play differently. None of them play the same. Even the same two damn guitars do not play and sound the same. They're all a little different. The goal is to find the one that you simply can't live without. On that note, we're going to wrap this thing up right there. I've got a couple of cool things coming up, and I know I say that a lot, but I'm finally I'm finally getting off my ass and getting things going. Actually, that's not true. It's not that I've been sitting on my ass. I've just had a billion things to do with selling houses and moving and jobs and all that stuff. Um, I've got this. Oh, I'll be right back. Check this out. Coming back. Coming back. Let me shut this down. So, I will be starting my uh, my master class on theory. And guess what? You don't have to pay for mine. I know a lot of them are out there. And they're like, oh, buy my master class, yada, yada. You don't have to pay for shit on mine. Just subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to help me out, go to my Patreon page. Donate there. If you don't, just keep watching the damn videos. This... <laughs> There we go. I'm a, yeah, you can see this. What we've got here, <laughs> this was actually my second attempt at making this. The first one I did, it actually looked like a damn high schooler. I mean, a third grader made it. It was terrible. What we've got here is my piano. Well, not my piano, but you know what I mean. And this is a guitar. And you've got, this is hard to do looking at it backwards. And the reason I'm looking at it is because I'm looking into my monitor. You got six, five, four, three, two, one. Guitar strings, frets. And it is an 8-fret guitar, so it is a beast of a guitar. This is what we're going to be using when I start my theory class. Because I did a video and I said the best way to learn theory, the easiest way is on a piano. Because as you can see here, everything on a piano is laid out very linearly. It's very easy to understand. On a guitar, not so easy to understand. 
So I've taped all this together. <laughs> it took me hours to do this, man. And it's uh, whew, literally took me hours to do this. And it's, uh, it, I hope it pays off because it was a ton of work. So uh, that's going to be on my, uh, I'm getting ready to start that theory class. And, um, and it's the master class. We're going to be covering everything on theory. And it's going to be, and you know, obviously I'm going to be doing other things during that. So like one, every one or two weeks, I'm going to do the next part of the theory class. And I'm going to start with chord structure. And um, kind of when I did that, uh, the easiest way to learn theory, I did a lot of basically chord structure stuff on that. But I'm going to start from the very beginning and move forward. So you will be able to see that. And that should be pretty cool. And we should have a good time doing that. And um, hell, hopefully everybody learns a lot of something. But on that note, we're going to wrap it up right there. I've been talking long enough. I've been going for 26 minutes and hell's bells. I wanted to do this in less than 15. But there again, that's why I got started a podcast. And uh, like I said, I, I always put a, I'll put a link to the podcast in my YouTube channels. But if you are not into politics, do not subscribe to my podcast because it is a very, very political. And I don't want to cross the two. You know, if you're not into politics, just please don't even bother with it and just stay here on my uh, YouTube channel. Because, you know, even if you don't believe the same thing, I, I believe I'm still a pretty damn nice guy. <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually pretty easy to get along with. Uh, so we don't have to agree on everything as long as we agree on some things. Because if you can see eye to eye occasionally, then there's common ground, no matter what it is. And common ground, sometimes all it takes to get you through the next day. And that's right. I got a bunch of sayings like that. And you'll be hearing those as long as you watch my channels. Because guess what? Not just a hat rack, my friend. There's actually a pretty decent sized brain in the old cranium right here. So to wrap this up, like the great Sammy Hagar said, if you miss the beat, you lose the rhythm and nothing falls into place. And that works for everything in your life. And I love that saying so much. I'm actually going to start closing out my podcast channel with that same thing. Because those are words to live by. Whatever instrument you play, play it to the best of your ability and play it to the fullest. Practice, practice, practice. And take in mind what I said. The problem may not be you. The problem simply may be your guitar. Because when you find the guitar that you love, then you will love to play guitar. Until the next time, my friends, God bless everybody and rock on.